Good evening and thanks for watching FSC TV. Alongside Andrew Pauling, I'm Kenzie Council. Tonight we cover FSC's exclusive movie night, a new shuttle system heading downtown, and the Minneapolis jury reaching a verdict. Only on the Weekly at 5, which starts right now. From Studio A on the campus of Florida Southern College, this is FSC TV. This week, Florida Southern's Black Student Union announced 11 candidates running for positions on the organization's executive board for the 2021-22 academic year. The election closed via Engage on the 18th with the final results posted on the 19th. Rashida Blair, class of 2023, will be serving as president. Tamira Chevalier, class of 2022, is serving as vice president. The new secretary position went to Angelique Simpson, class of 2024. The Shia Gray, class of 2022, is serving as treasurer. The new social media director is Taylor Colbert, class of 2023. Danielle Dayanayrine, class of 2023, is the new event coordinator. And lastly, the new historian is Raven Harrison, class of 2023. BSU will be holding an end-of-year ice cream social next Thursday, starting at 4 p.m. Grab your blankets and join your friends at the free outdoor screening of Moulin Rouge tonight at 8 p.m. The movie screening is exclusive to Florida Southern students and will take place at the Polk Museum of Art across from the Lakeland Public Library on Lake Morton. The film is a romance musical based in Paris about a young writer that falls in love with the star of a cabaret. Students can reserve a spot for the pre-show VIP reception at the Polk Museum of Art website. Ambassador-led tours of the art exhibit will be offered at the reception at 6 p.m. and there will be food and drinks provided. It's time for your Southern Spotlight segment. Each week, FSC TV partners with SGA to bring you campus news and to highlight initiatives available to the Florida Southern community. This week, SGA recaps the reintroduction of the student discount card and highlights Florida Southern's annual spring tradition. Hey Mox, I'm so happy to be on Southern Spotlight today to share a little bit more information about the reintroduction of the SGA discount card program. We're so excited to reintroduce this initiative originally established by the 2019-2020 Executive Board just days before we were sent home for the pandemic. When my administration was elected into office, we felt like it was inconsiderate of us to expect local businesses to provide discounts when they were still recovering from the effects of COVID. However, now that us as college students have access to the vaccine and local businesses within our area getting back to the swing of things, we felt like this was the perfect time to reintroduce the SG discount card program a little bit earlier than we anticipated. If you take a look at our Instagram, you'll see all the different discounts and offers that we've been able to establish with businesses within the area. I hope you are as excited as I am. Go Mox! Hi Mox, I'm Lucas Blackwell, President of the Association of Campus Entertainment and Vice President of Student Activities for SGA. I'm excited to share more information with you today about the exciting end of year events ACE and SGA are having. Next Saturday, May 1st, is Farewell Festival Mox Magic Edition, from 6 to 10 p.m. Join us for rides in the Branscombe lot, inflatables in the field between Annie Pfeiffer and the Water Dome, exclusive giveaways in Backhawk Garden, and food on Mr. George's Green. Follow ACE on social media at ACE underscore FSC for more details. Our last Red Friday of the school year will take place on Friday, May 7th, from 10.30 to noon. Stop by the Buck Stop to pick up a Red Friday t-shirt, a Chick-fil-A sandwich, or both. You must be wearing red to receive either giveaway. So make sure to mark your calendars and come out to Farewell Festival on May 1st and Red Friday on May 7th. We hope to see you there. The men's golf team finished in sixth in the Sunshine State Conference Tournament earlier this week. Adam Alvarez and Noah Kumar led the Mox as they tied for ninth individually with a score of two over. Florida Southern College has been selected to host the 2021 Women's Lacrosse South Regional Tournament as announced by the NCAA on Monday, April 19th. Moccasin Field at the Barnett Athletic Complex will play host to the three-team tournament set for May 14th and 16th. This will mark the fourth time since the 2016 season that the Mox will host the regional tournament. 
FSC hosted three straight regional tournaments from 2016 to 2018. This upcoming Tuesday, Athletic Director and Dean of Wellness Drew Howard will join Kenzie, George, and I on the final snake bite of the semester as he discusses all the behind-the-scenes work that went into the return to play this spring. Check it out this Tuesday at 5. Southeastern's women's soccer team took home the title in the Lakeland bracket of the NAIA National Tournament with a dominating 2-0 victory over the Reinhardt University Eagles in front of 196 fans Saturday night. The Fire scored their first goal 21 minutes into the match and an insurance goal with six minutes left in the game off a penalty kick. They will be one of 10 teams advancing to Foley, Alabama, where they will play in the tournament that determines the national champion. Those games can be live streamed via the NAIA network. The team has advanced to the tournament four years in a row. The North American Butterfly Association just recertified Lakeland's Hollis Garden as a butterfly garden. The Hollis Garden will now provide necessary nectar plants and host a range of butterflies, including swallowtails and monarchs. The mission of the organization is to increase the public's enjoyment and conservation of butterflies. The NABA successfully achieves these goals by providing education on butterfly conservation and many opportunities for the community to experience butterflies outdoors. The City of Lakeland has also been recognized by the Monarch Joint Venture Organization for consistently promoting a monarch butterfly habitat. One Lakeland area will get to experience a fresh approach on transportation starting this summer. A one-year trial to implement an electric shuttle system in the downtown district was approved last week. The Squeeze is a six-year-in-the-making collaboration between the LDDA and Citrus Connection. The two groups designed the concept to transport visitors and employees from parking and office spaces to restaurants, bars, and shopping boutiques. Ride tickets will be available through a cashless ticketing app, with prices estimated to be $3 per week or $9 for a month-long pass. The shuttle will operate for three hours Monday through Thursday starting at 11 a.m., five hours on the weekend from 5 to 10 p.m., and during both respective periods on Fridays. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced on Friday that the City of Lakeland, among four other Tampa Bay communities, would receive nearly $150 million combined to fund infrastructure projects. $42.9 million was awarded to the City of Lakeland in partnership with Bonnet Springs Park to address flood hazard risks along Bonnet Basins. The funding is linked to DeSantis' Pro Rebuild Florida Mitigation General Infrastructure Program, which aims to improve current state infrastructure, particularly during hurricane season. According to city officials, the grant should be completed over a 10-year span and will begin in the next several months. Jury members returned a guilty verdict in the high-profile case against a former Minneapolis police officer for the death of George Floyd on Tuesday. Derek Chauvin was charged with second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and manslaughter. The prosecutor's witness in the case included first responders, Floyd's medical examiner, underage bystanders, and Minnesota Police Department employees. The overall testimonial from these witnesses was that the use of force was unnecessary and was the direct cause of Floyd's death. The defense's witness testified on Floyd's history of drug abuse, the aggressiveness in the forming crowd, and the justification on Chauvin's use of force. An appeal of the case may throw out one or more of Chauvin's charges. After three weeks of witness and expert testimonies, many people celebrated the vote but claimed it was not the end to a racist system. George Floyd died May of last year while being arrested over the alleged use of a counterfeit $20 bill. His death resulted in months-long worldwide protests against police brutality, racism, and accountability. Many corporations, in turn, voiced their support for the movement while critics called the protests violent due to riots that occurred. Praised as a Wright Brothers moment, NASA's helicopter succeeded in a historic first flight on Mars Monday morning. Before safely landing, the Ingenuity flew 10 feet in the air for a short time. The solar-powered helicopter is autonomous, running on algorithms the Ingenuity team developed for the flight. 
Mars has one-third of Earth's gravity and an extremely thin atmosphere. These unknown factors made the $85 million demo high risk, but yielded high reward. To celebrate the success and pay homage to the first flight on Earth, the Mars airfield used will now be known as Wright Brothers Field. And that's your news for this week. Alongside Kenzie Council, I'm Andrew Pauling, and we'll be back next week at 5 for the final show of the semester.